This video will discuss correlation and least squares regression. Correlation can be considered the measure of association between two variables. It can range from negative one to one. We can say that variables have a strong correlation if they have a correlation closer to one. They could have a strong negative correlation if they have a correlation or a value closer to negative one. If the correlation between two variables is zero, then there's a weak correlation between those two variables. Anything negative is a negative correlation. Anything positive is a positive correlation. The Pearson correlation, what we'll call um, little r, is appropriate for linear data. So the Pearson correlation coefficient can be calculated by uh, basically knowing all of the means and the observations for each of the x and y variables. And so we could take xi minus x bar times yi minus y bar and do that for all of the values in our data set. And then we take that and divide by the same things, except we square the terms. xi minus x bar squared, add all of those up for all of the x values. yi minus y bar squared, add all of those up for all the y values in our data set. And then we'll take the square root of that. And so in doing this, you will get a number between negative 1 and 1. If someone says the correlation between two variables is 0 0.9, well, that would indicate a strong positive correlation. If they indicate it's 0, it indicates no correlation. If they indicate it's negative 0 0.9, that says that it's a strong negative correlation. Going back to regression, you'll find some relationships. If two variables are correlated with one another, generally the regression will show a, a steeper line and it will show that the two variables are correlated. So let's go back to regression and think about a simple proportion model. We can think about scaling the x variable by some value to make some predictions for y. In doing this, we're multiplying some value x by a proportion. In other words, we can set beta 0 equal to 0. We can also call this a no-intercept model or an intercept-free model. All that we have now when we're making our, our, our estimates of y is we have a slope times some value x plus some random error term, which we'll denote here by epsilon. And so the idea here is that the predictions are proportional x, but the random error does not need to be proportional to x. And so we'll talk about this more in depth. Here's what I mean when I say the slope for a simple proportions model. If we had the data in front of us, we could calculate this by uh, taking each x value, multiplying up by each y value, and summing that up for the data set. And then in the denominator, taking each x value and squaring it and summing that up for the, for the data set. So here the slopes can differ tremendously depending on whether or not an intercept is contained in the model. What you see here in the line in red represents a no intercept mon model where beta zero is set to zero. That is the value for the lines go through the point zero zero or the origin of the data. Here's where beta zero equals five. The, what we'll call the y-intercept, where the line crosses the y-axis, is at 5. And so you can see that depending on whether or not you set the intercept to 0 or 5, you can end up with a very different looking line. And so this is why the positioning of the regression line is really important, and it can influence your predictions tremendously. Now, what if we add a value for beta 0? We might be interested in how do we choose beta 0 and beta 1. Here, our yi is going to equal beta 0 plus beta 1 times x sub i plus some random variable or, or some random term, epsilon sub i. And this brings us to the principles of least squares. And this was really going back to Legendre's idea. We want it to choose the intercept and slope so that the residual sums of squares what we'll denote SSR, uh, 
is as small as possible. And so we want to choose the values of beta 0 and beta 1 that make SSR, the sum of the squares of residuals, as small as possible. And so that can be represented by what we'll call epsilon sub i squared. And so here we take each observation y sub i and then subtract from it the predictions, what we'll call beta 0 hat, beta 1 hat, and then we multiply the beta 1 hat by x sub i and square it. Because we want to predict y, we want this regression line to be as close as possible to all the data points as it can be. And so this is really the concept of simple linear regression. So here's a graphical representation of what we're doing. Remember now epsilon sub i hat is going to equal our observed value yi minus some population mean mu sub y i sub i hat. And that's going to equal y sub i minus our regression equation, or beta 0 hat plus beta 1 hat times x sub i. And so we end up with a line. Uh, that's our line for beta 0 plus beta 1 times x. And then we're going to have some random error. So each point is going to deviate from that line somewhat. And so we call that the random error represented by epsilon. We also have the intercept value for beta 0. Again, that's where the line crosses the y-axis. We're also going to have some predicted value for y given x. And so that might fall somewhere here on the line. You can note that for this observation here, even though it predicts the value to be much lower than it is, the value for x in this case, the observed value of y, given that x value, is quite high. Uh, and so we have some random error there in our regression. And so this is why it's important in regression to understand where these data points fall relative to this line. A little more on how to find those least squares estimates. We know that we want to find the values for beta 0 hat and beta 1 hat so that they're, they minimize the sum of square residuals. To calculate these values, we need to calculate the means and standard deviations for both x and y and some other calculations. And so if we wanted to do this by hand, here's what we would do. We would find the value beta 0 hat by using the mean of y and subtracting from it the estimated slope, beta 1 hat, times x bar. Now it's easiest to first find the slope, beta 1 hat, because we need to use that in the calculation for beta 0 hat. And so we can write beta 1 hat as s sub xy divided by s sub xx. And you can find those formulas here on the bottom. All we're doing is pretty much taking each value x sub i and subtracting from it the mean and squaring that in the case of s sub xx, or just multiplying both x and y together for the s sub xy. And so these are how we might find those least squares estimates, say, if we wanted to do these calculations manually. Now there's a great example we're going to go through for the rest of this slide deck, and it's going to be looking at the weight of chicken gains. And so we have a bunch of uh, weight gains in chickens from an experiment after they invested or ingested lysine. And so lysine is an additive uh, given to many animals uh, to promote the, their growth and to make them healthy. And so the chicken ingested a certain amount of lysine measured in grams. And then after the experiment, after a certain number of days, we measured the weight gain in those chickens. And so all of the data are found in this table. We have 12 different chickens. We have weight gains for them. We have the lysine ingested. And then I have some other calculations here that I might use if I were to do it manually. I have each yi squared value, each xi squared value, each xi times yi value. And so oftentimes, particularly in those sums calculations, you'll need to find out what the sums of all of those values are for a given variable. 
And so you can begin to see, even by just looking at this data at the start, we can probably draw a line that has a positive slope through this value, through these data, I should say. That is, as chickens in, ingest more lysine, they tend to gain more weight. And so a nice example here that we'll work through to learn more about how we can apply the concepts of regression. I'm going to leave this uh, here, and I'm not going to go through it. I'm just going to say that we can calculate the sample means for each y value for the y bar, which is the mean of lysine ingested, or sorry, the mean of the weight of chickens. X bar is the mean of the lysine ingested. And then we can calculate those values S sub XX and S sub XY. And these aren't really needed to report on, but we need to use them in the calculations. And so all the calculations are here uh, and you can review them. Once we have those values, we can then plug them in and find out the least squares estimates. Here our slope beta 1 hat is S sub XY divided by S sub XX. And so when we do that, we get 35.8280. Our value for the intercept, beta 0 hat, remember is y bar minus beta 1 hat times x bar. Or when we use the values that we calculated, we get a y intercept or a beta 0 hat of 12.5085. And so then we can write out the equation of the line. y hat equals 12.5 plus 35.8 times x. So what exactly does this mean? This means that for every additional gram of lysine ingested by a chicken, that chicken will gain 35.8 grams. That's the meaning of the slope term. And so we might expect this. So we might go back to the data and think about whether or not this makes sense. That is, as you gain one additional gram of lysine that's ingested, does the chicken gain 35.8 grams? So a nice way to check and to look back at your data is to look and see if these values might make sense for what you're working with. 